Hey guys, you know as our trucks get a little older, these Cummins powered Ram vehicles, there's a few things we need to keep an eye on. I've got five of them here that I've kind of looked at over the years. Things that you want to kind of just keep in the back of your mind and check them every once in a while as you're doing your maintenance on your truck or even if you don't do your own maintenance. Just put an eyeball on them and make sure that things are like they should be. So let's take a look at them. Okay guys, so the first one on our list is the steering linkage here, and I've got a video on it, and I'll put the link in the comments where I discuss it a little more detail. But basically what Ram is doing on this thing, and they've had some accidents where these nuts have backed off right here. And in some cases it's pulled completely out where the driver didn't really notice it. Steering's going to get really sloppy, and your wheel's not going to center up. It's probably the very first indication if these things start to back off. But their solution is to tack it right here and right here. And I'm not crazy about welding on that. Uh, you know, it's gonna preclude being able to adjust your uh, alignment on your steering wheel in the future. If they do a truck alignment or something and you had to do this, uh, it's gonna be difficult. You might be able to grind that tack off. I don't know if you were careful, you probably could. But uh, right now I'm not doing the recall. I'm just waiting and see how it goes. I was thinking about maybe running a long stiff rod between here and here and tacking them here. And that's probably not a good choice of words, come to think of it. But, um, you know, in that way you just grind the, say the center of the rod, make your adjustment and possibly tack them back. But I don't like that either. I think Loctite is probably the way to go with this thing, personally. But, you know, if you've had it done, that's fine. It's bulletproof now. You don't have to worry about it. So, let's move on to the next one. Okay, the second one is a grid heater. And again, I've got a video on that and I've discussed it in pretty good detail, so we'll go ahead and uh, just kind of brief over that. But if you look at here, using my expensive Craftsman pointer, you can see right here, this is where the, the grid heater gets its power from the relay over on the other side. It simply just crosses over a very simple circuit. But what's happening on some vehicles, and when it happens, it's catastrophic. It'll, uh, it'll trash your engine because what happens is the bottom of this, there's a bolt. And uh, on some vehicles where either the solenoid contacts are frozen and you just get unlimited uh, 225 amps is about what it is that comes through here when it's energized. And uh, it'll just, basically, if there's a loose connection somewhere, it'll weld it and start melting it. And then it'll drop into the intake manifold, and then you've got a uh, cylinder sucking it in, and uh, you've got a problem. So there's a way to check that, though. Now, I've got mine disconnected, and I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, just because I'm down here in the south and I don't use it, and uh, you can disconnect it, and I haven't had any codes. I've had it disconnected probably, I don't know, four to six months now. Now we're into the colder weather here now, but I still haven't noticed any, any problems. When you go to start your truck with it disconnected, you just go straight to start. You don't wait to any preheat or anything like that. But what you can do is take this, and I've discussed this, I call it the jiggle test. Probably another not very good word to use, but a lot of, a lot of the, uh, that's not my choice of words. And what you do is you, you, you wiggle it right here. And if this is loose at all, basically don't run your truck. Get it to the dealer or pull that, pull that uh, grid heater off and look in there and check that thing because that can be a really serious problem. But, you know, we don't know how many trucks are experiencing this. Uh, Cummins doesn't put out any numbers. Ram doesn't put out any numbers. I asked my dealer. He said he's never heard of it. So take this with a grain of salt, but it is happening. I can tell you that for sure. I've had people on my, on my channel, YouTube channel, come back. One of them told me that he actually did the jiggle test, and when he wiggled it, he thought it fell off into the intake manifold. So he pulled it off at home, and sure as hell he was able to fish it out with a magnet. If you would have cranked the engine, he would have lost the engine. So just keep that one in mind. 
Okay, so as I mentioned, I've got mine disconnected, and you can see this not so pretty piece of tape here. You really don't have to tape it at all because when this is disconnected, it's ground. It runs all the way through the solenoid uh, when the solenoid's energized, but it's not energized normally. It's a uh, open contacts. It's just energized when the grid heat is actually on. But nonetheless, even when it's energized, this is still ground uh, until you hook it up to this positive terminal here. Terminal here because it, you know, it comes back through the ground through the grid heater, which is the resistor basically, and then you have a, you would get it would get its power from here. As I said, 225 amps, and um, you know that's being fed from both batteries, this one and that one, and uh, so that's the way I got mine set up. I'm not recommending it or just not recommending it. I'm just saying that's what I did just because, as I mentioned, I live here in the south and I'm not worried about it. Okay, the next one is this upper radiator hose and its T-section right here. And this has been a, a common point of uh, failure. I say common, it's, it's pretty well acknowledged that uh, what happens is this, this is plastic and it does deteriorate over time, especially from heat really, from heavy towing and high temperatures. And it will deteriorate and, and crack and start uh, leaking. And so you got to kind of keep an eye on that. Now I believe this is only the 2013s, 14s, and 15s. Uh, and it's very easy to change and it's about a 75 buck uh, thing. You can do it yourself. One clamp here, a uh, clamp over back here, and a clamp on the hose. Uh, pretty easy. I'll probably change mine eventually. But this is something you got to keep an eye on. Uh, some people are just changing the, the T itself, putting a metal aftermarket T. Ram has addressed this and they've so said beefed up this plastic or improved it where uh, they do have a replacement part number if you look it up and you'll see that it's not uh, supposedly not an issue anymore when you change it. There is another T on the bottom but it's not an issue because it doesn't receive the heat that this one receives. So another area to keep an eye on, especially as you get a high mileage. Okay, another one is the intake hose, the duct, between your air cleaner and your turbocharger. It's this big assembly down here. It's got the baffle and it's got the foam on it. And I've done some extensive testing on this thing with and without the foam and with and without the baffle. And you can look at those links. I'll also put that in the comments. But what's happening uh, over a long period of time is that foam is deteriorating. Now my truck's six years old and the foam was still good. I have it out right now, but I'm not sure that's quite the final solution. Uh, I have heard of the plastic baffle pretty much self-disintegrating. Uh, I don't know if the solution is to go to an aftermarket or you, for about a hundred and something bucks you can just replace this thing every six, eight years or something and not worry about it. So, you know, I don't know what the exact answer is on that. I think what I'm probably gonna do is get a aftermarket uh, duct here and try that just, just so that I can do some testing on it. I'm curious about it and see how that goes. As far as the air box here, I don't see any point in changing this air box to an aftermarket. I don't see any benefit in that because this air box is a, a active air. It sucks from the front of the vehicle. You can see it right in the front. And it also sucks down at the bottom uh, through that duct work, which I'm gonna show you next. So anyway, this is something that, uh, you know, as the truck gets probably five, six plus years more, depending on your service and how hard it's been run and where it's been run, you may wanna take a look at that also. I think the primary concern, concern is just the foam deteriorating and the turbocharger eating it. Apparently the turbocharger doesn't have any problem eating it and it also doesn't have any problem eating some of the plastic that comes off of that duct. So uh, I don't think it's doing it any good, but uh, I've heard of it happening, so. Okay, and the last thing is your active air 
intake system on your air cleaner, it either sucks air through the grill in the front, and you can see that pretty readily, and there's no real hoses or anything, but there's a, down in this wheel well, there's a, more or less looking like a dryer hose, really. It's, it's not a real high quality hose. And some people have reported that it deteriorates over time. And so I'll show you kind of an easy way to check it because it's very difficult to see. You have to tear this whole fender apart to really get to it. But I'll show you how I got to it and you can use your own judgment on that. Let me open this little trap door out of the way here. Okay, so this is how I do it. Put my, put my cell phone in here. See, here's my cell phone. I put it in here. Shoot. Okay, and then we look at the cell phone picture. Let me look at it. Yeah, well, I caught a piece of it right there. You can see the hose right here. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Some people have torn that down and found it completely collapsed. And of course, that's going to restrict your airflow. Let's try another one. Shoot. Okay, we got a good picture of it that time. Let me, uh, let me back off the camera where you can see it. Okay, so there it is on my, on my phone. Hopefully you can see it, but I'll go ahead and post this picture too. You can see it's in pretty good shape. And that's the last thing, and that's all of them guys, and that's the main things that I wanted to show you. And I hope you in, uh, got something out of the video. And until next time, adios.